To grow productive and healthy crops, we need to supply nitrogen. But how we do that has a big impact on our environment. Manure is rich in nitrogen. We get our muck from uh, two small holdings um, that have horses, uh, but it's limited supply for the volume of veg we're growing. Nitrogen is most commonly added as a manufactured fertiliser. We can also build it up in the soil with nitrogen fixing green manures like clovers. But all of these methods impact on the environment in different ways. Here in Mid Wales, a group of farmers and environmentalists are working together on a potential solution. Crops need nitrogen for good yields, but making fertiliser by industrial methods causes greenhouse gas emissions. Nitrogen fixing green manures can be grown on cropland and dug into the soil to provide nitrogen to the following crops. So these are fixing nitrogen in the air into a compound that can be taken up by the plants. Green manures are great for soil health, adding the organic matter feeds all the critters and keeps a healthy structure. But growing green manures takes up space. To fertilise crops this way, we need to put the same amount of land as we use for crops down to green manures. So that means doubling the land area used for crop production. This worked fine when there were fewer people, but now with the need for more forests for biodiversity reserves and carbon storage, land is in high demand. Small scale growers often use animal manure but we'd struggle to meet our nitrogen needs through manure alone. The nitrogen in animal manure comes from the food the animal has eaten and is best retained within the farm to fertilize the grass or grow fodder crops. Then in adding the nitrogen to soil in whatever form, you have the challenge of adding the right amount at the right time. Short-lived annual green manures are dug into soil before sowing a crop, but this method doesn't offer much flexibility in how much green manure is added and when. Too much nitrogen in the soil and it all too easily leaks out as nitrates into rivers or as the greenhouse gas nitrous oxide. It's a problem for all of temperate agriculture. But could it be that this group of growers and researchers have found a workable solution? A way of using green manures more effectively is to grow them in one place, cut the leaves and add the right amount to feed the crop at the right time. This means that all sorts of plants can be used as green manures, including trees and shrubs. If a plant leaf is a rich green colour, it's rich in nitrogen. For example, you could grow a mix of trees, shrubs and ground covers, including nitrogen fixing plants, like a nitrogen producing forest. From there, you can add the right amount of nitrogen rich leaves to your soil as and when the crops need it. And those permanent patches act as much needed biodiversity reserves and carbon store, which you can grow in other places so as not to take up your prime cropland. The perennial green manure project has been trialling this method with growers in Mid Wales. It follows on from research at Bangor University in North Wales, which found that you can lower emissions of the powerful greenhouse gas nitrous oxide by growing and using perennial green manures in this way. Some of the perennial green manures used are nitrogen fixing plants including alder trees or clovers, but others are just very good at gathering up nitrogen from the soil like willow or comfrey. With the perennial green manures I think there's a few different benefits really. Uh, the one moving into the next five or ten years it looks like the government subsidy system is going to lend itself a lot more to having habitat um, and areas for, for wildlife on, on the land and I think this could tick lots of different boxes because you're you're growing trees and having that alongside a hopefully productive farm system where you can actually use some of that product to then um, put nitrogen into the system through a, a natural way really as opposed to using artificial nitrogen with some of the, the drawbacks and greater carbon emissions that that brings with it. Dwi'n gobeithio ddod ochr polisi i'r trafodaeth ddydd gwir, achos mae gennym ni grŵp reitydorol, mae gennym ni ffermwyr, mae gennym ni policy makers fel, fel fi hunan ar, ar, ar rai sydd, sydd yn rhedeg y prosiect hefyd. Felly, dwi'n gobeithio fyddwn ni'n gallu ddod um, syniadau newydd i'r prosiect i gweithio allan sut allai'r prosiect symud ymlaen yn yr dyfodol. Dwi fwy i'r ochr y machinery allai helpu Right, are the FPU machinery so any need a guy? Here we're talking about like how we can process it. So if people are to grow 
We're using the leaves as a fertiliser. We've been cutting and drying that. We've pelletised some for the trials. We're using that as a way of adding nitrogen as and when the crop needs. Drying or processing the leaves allows farmers to add them to the soil at any time. Aberystwyth University's Beacon Project produced pellets from alder and clover leaves. We harvested the leaves back in August last year when they're still nice and green and there's still a high nitrogen content. Uh, then they were dried uh, and thrashed and milled uh, and then pelletised so they're much easier to apply to the soil. So these could be used with a fertiliser spreader. So if it was shown that this was a climate smart way to do it, if the processing didn't have too high an energy cost, which is might, we need to do some life cycle analysis on that, um, then it could be a viable business. Diverse shrubby areas like this are a great asset for biodiversity and carbon storage. Imagine if every field of crop had next to it or nearby an area to provide the ecological services necessary for growing those crops. We call it a bioservice area, as it's not just the nutrients and organic matter for the soil, but the habitats to harbour the biodiversity for pest control, the stability in the landscape to slow winds and prevent floods and for carbon storage. Our final report will be out by spring 2024. Sign up on our website to get a copy emailed to you. Thank you.